the entrance antiphone. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book, the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is here with before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him, to them. He was ruddy, a youth, handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents have sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay with his, uh, on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus, made clay, and anointed my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed, and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? 
He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He, is a prof he said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, He is of age. Question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not he listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir? that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord.
the scripture readings at this Mass speak very strongly about the restoration of sight, of a sight that's not what we see with our human eyes. In our first reading from the Old Testament, we hear that Samuel is called by God to anoint David a prophet. And he goes to Jesse and his sons, and a whole number of sons come through, and none of them is chosen by God to be the king. Finally, David is brought, the last of the sons brought to uh, Samuel. And Samuel hears God say to him, this is the one, anoint him. So David is anointed king, not as man sees, does God see. In the gospel, we hear about the man born blind, the man who's born blind, who is healed and given his sight by Jesus. Some scripture scholars observe that it's important to notice that Jesus bends down and takes his spittle, his spit, and mixes it with the clay and makes mud and puts it on the man's eye. Scripture scholars observe that in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, God took spittle and clay and fashioned man. He takes something of creation, the earth, and he takes God, and he mixes the two together, and something very beautiful happens. Creation, man. Scripture scholars then observe that we have something extra added here in this gospel passage. We have that Jesus tells this man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. This water of the pool of Siloam is a prefigurement or a foreshadowing of the water of baptism that Jesus gives to the church to get to use in Uh, bringing us into new life. That life first existed when God created out of dust and out of spittle. And then through our sin, through original sin, we needed to be refashioned, recreated. And that's where the water of baptism comes in. And through this Lenten season, we are preparing for the waters of baptism. Those who are not baptized to receive it, those of us who have already been baptized to to recommit ourselves to this water of baptism, to allow the grace of God again to help us to see with his eyes, not the eyes of the world. And what does all of this say to us now in 2020? We are journeying through an unprecedented time, through COVID ID 19, a pandemic when most Catholics throughout our country, maybe even throughout the world, are not able to participate in Mass, are not uh, through live uh, in person, and are not able to receive Holy Communion. And that is an absence for many. And that is challenging and difficult for many persons who know that our Lord in Holy Communion, the great sacrament that Jesus gives us, is his presence within us in a very real way. We are called with spiritual eyes, eyes of faith, to see things not just as the world sees it, but with the eyes of faith, with the eyes of God. And we look at the words of Scripture that the Church has placed before us today, And in the psalm response, Psalm 23, what is familiar to many of us, though I walk in the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff to guide me. This time, some might describe as the valley of darkness, as the valley of absence, as the valley of 
being in persecution, being in uh, exile. The Israelites were in exile. The new the church, the new Jerusalem is living out that message as we in exile here are longing and waiting for uh, the heavenly Jerusalem for the, the bread of life in heaven. Here we have a foreshadowing of it, the Eucharist. And maybe for a short time, that foreshadowing, which we are not physically able to receive, maybe our spiritual eye and our spiritual communion can strengthen us and remind us that the Lord is in charge. No matter how many different uh, errors or issues or problems or concerns we see in the world when this uh, virus is discovered here or there or this area is shut down or more quarantined than we are now, we don't know. God is in charge. We ask for his grace that we might put our faith in him who sees truly and with his grace, with his faith given to us, open our heart to him and trust that he knows and he wants us to follow him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue our Lenten journey, let us not grow weary of begging the Lord for all our needs that our Holy Father and all bishops may be given light and strength to carry out our vocation as successors of the apostles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may work untiringly for that justice which is the foundation of, for peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are preparing to be baptized or received into full communion with the Catholic Church at Easter may continue to be enlightened by Christ the Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our society may be cured of spiritual blindness and rediscover the equal dignity of the unborn, the terminally ill, those on death row, and all who are oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women may generously open their hearts to God's invitation to serve his people through the priesthood, the religious life, the true married life, and the holy single life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this time of trial and testing, 
we ask Our Lady of Guadalupe to teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts as we pray and wait in joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are ill may be comforted and those who have died may be welcomed into eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the people of our parish, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these our spoken prayers and the unspoken prayers in our hearts. Help us to acknowledge you as Lord in our lives. Help us, like the man healed from blindness, to move from saying he's a man to a prophet, to from God, to calling him Lord. Strengthen us in our sight. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal re remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith 
and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the communion antiphon. The Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. A spiritual, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. St. Louis, St. Alphonsus Liguori spiritual act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things and I desire thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. 
permit not that I should ever be separated from him. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten every one who comes into this world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthened me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me. That with your saints, I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.